This is the book of 1 John, chapter 2, verse 1. My little children, these things write I unto you, that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, the righteous. I want to give all honor, glory, and infinite praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Ba'asham, Yahweh Shai, Ba'asham, Akai, Pudash. Double honor to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone. Peace and salutations to the elect scattered abroad, pushing his truth and sincerity. Yahweh Ba'asham, Yahweh Shai, Ba'asham, Akai, Pudash, Barakadam. To use a quantum, Wa'akim, Wa'akwaf, you know your elders, you brothers, you sisters, hopeful, elect out their labor and keeping the commandments to the best of your ability. Giving diligence, make your calling and election sure. And of course, keeping faith in the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, and His beloved Son, our Lord and our Savior, Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, in these last days and these perilous times that we're living in. This is Brother Peshai Ban Yahshua Allah. And this will be a quick lesson through the Spirit and Pavi Ha'abashim Shai on the propitiation of our sins, right? Yahweh Shai, our Lord and our Savior, our big brother, our mediator, our high priest, the sacrificial lamb who laid down his life for the sins of the entire nation of Israel, starting with the elect of the nation of Israel, and Lord willing, we're part of the number of the elect. You see that? The, um, the first spirit created by the Heavenly Father, and through that spirit, through Yahweh Shai, the Heavenly Father created everything. Right? Firstborn among many brethren. Right? Our Lord, our Savior, our big brother, man. Our advocate. You see? Who died for our sins. Right? The word propitiation, I'm going to that right now through the spirit. When you go to the etymology, it says, uh, late 14th century, Propitiation, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, um, Salaki, if I'm not, it says atonement, um, expi um, expiation, right? So he atoned for our sins, right? It says uh, an atonement, appease, and who was he appeasing? The Father. It says favorable, gracious, kind, well disposed, right? Uh, I, I looked it up as well as a regular um, definition, which I'm gonna get that right now through the Spirit of Salak. So propitiation in the Google definition says the action of propi uh, propitiating or appeasing of a God. Who is that God? The Most High, Yahweh. He's the Most High. He's the, the Ancient of Days, the Father of Spirits, right? So um, he's the highest power because the word God is in Hebrew is Allah, which means power. He's the highest power. It says spirit or person, right? It says atonement, especially that of Mashiach, Yahweh Shai. So our Lord, our Savior, Yahweh Shai, atoned. For our sins, what's the definition of atonement? Is this right here? I looked it up as well. The Google says reparation for wrong or injury, right? Then it says in religious context, what's the word religious or religion means worship? It says reparation or expiation for sin. And what is sin? The definition of sin. Let's get the script. So that's the book of First John, chapter three, verse four. Whosoever committeth sin transgressive also the law for sin is the transgression of the law so the biblical definition of sin is when you break the heavenly father's laws his statutes and commandments which pursuant to the scripture in psalm 147 in verse um i believe it was 14 let me see if i can get that right quick i read that one in a little minute psalms 147 right in verse con no no 19 salaki is verse 19 it says he is sure of his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He have not dealt so with any nation. And as for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye Yahweh Vashem Yahushai. So the Heavenly Father only given his law through Moses to the nation to the nation of Israel. So who, who could get redeemed from sin? Right? Who did Yahweh Shai come for? The nation of Israel. He's a propitiation for our sins. That's possessive. Only the nation of Israel, man. Not everybody, not all the nations. You see? So we're gonna go back to first John 3 and verse 4 again. Then we get um back to the definition of atonement. So first John 3 and 4 it says, Whosoever committed sin transgresses also the law. For sin is transgression of the law. So that's the definition of sin. So our Lord Yahweh Shah, he came to do what? Redeem the sins of the nation of Israel. Now when the scriptures say the whole world or um um, the Heavenly Father so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son. The word world is cosmos. What's going to the nation of Israel, man? You know, it's not going to every single body. You have the nation of Israel scattered the four corners of the earth, and you have the remnant returning back to Him. Because only a remnant going to return back to Yahweh Bashim Al Shai and um, get redeemed from their sins. You have wicked Israelites that are going to pay for their sins because they're not covered in the blood of the Lamb. You know? So let's go back to the definition right quick. Then we'll get a couple more, you know, quick straight to the point. 
I'm at the you know at the plantation, so I don't want to make it too long. Salakia, but when you go back to the definition of um, atonement, it says the reconciliation of the Most High and humankind was instead of humankind, it should say it should it should say Israel, the nation of Israel, right? It says the reconciliation of the Most High and humankind or the nation of Israel through Yahweh Mashiach. So we're being reconciled back to the Father through Yahweh Shamashiach. He is our atonement, which we have a high holy day called the Day of Atonement, where we um fast for twenty four hours. You know, full day we don't eat, we don't drink, we you know we afflict our souls, we afflict our bodies, and we you know um boost up our spirits because that that builds up your spirit, man. You know, when you fast, and also basically the fast mourn, be in that state of mourning, you know, afflicting your souls, all the sins you committed that year. You know, that's where you have the Day of Atonement. You know, but also we know what Yahweh Shai is the ultimate atonement for the sins of the entire nation, starting with the elect, because he was the ultimate sacrifice. That's what we're covered in his blood, and we have to believe that. You know, we must believe that we're covered in his blood. So from there, let's look at some more precepts. Let's get Romans 3 and verse 25. Let's see if we want to start up some. Oh, yeah, this whole this whole chapter is beautiful, man. All right? Let's start verse 1. Then we'll jump down. It says, Romans 3 and 1. What advantage then have the Jew? Or what profit is there of circumcision? Right? So what advantage do we have, man, being Israelites? It says much every way, every way. Chiefly because that unto them were committed the oracles of the Most High. See, unto the nation of Israel was committed the oracles of the Most High. Right? And this is for what if some did not believe? Shall, the, shall their unbelief make the faith of the Most High without effect? God forbid, yea, let the Most High be true, but every man a liar. As it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sins and mightest overcome where thou art judged. Right? Let's jump down to the point. Right? This whole chapter is beautiful. But when it gets to a point, let's see. Right here, let's, let's look at verse 19. Now we know that what things soever the law saith is saved to them who are under the law. You see? It says that every mouth may be stopped and all the world may be, become guilty before the Most High. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. So by if you're just going to base on just the law, no one is justified, man. N none of us. You see? Then it says, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. And the Apostle Paul broke this down beautifully in, um, what, what chapter is that? Is it the, the seventh chapter, if I'm not mistaken? I believe it was Romans 7th chapter. He broke it down beautifully, you know, saying, oh, wretched man that I am. You know, basically understanding that. You know, If we wasn't given the law of adultery or idolatry or covetousness, we would never, we would never have um, known about that. You see that? But the law gave it to us, the Israelites. But let's read on down, right? It says, For by the law is the knowledge of sin, but now the, the righteousness of the Most High without the law is manifest, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Now watch this. Even the righteousness of the Most High, which is by faith of Yahweh Shammashiach, belief on his Son, unto all, and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of the Most High. So another thing I want to stress in this lesson right quick is um, don't let your sins weigh you down. You fall short, you get right back up, bro. And keep pushing this word. And for you sisters out there as well that believe. You fall short, get back up and keep believing, man. You know, pray to Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai. It says, because uh, the scripture just said it, verse 23. This is Romans chapter uh, Salakit 3, verse 23. For all have sinned. And this, this all is going to the nation of Israel. You know what I'm saying? We all have sinned because we've been given the law. So we're the only ones telling you that can sin. But now that these heathens have our records and took the book in, and, you know, they got the book in their possession, now they're accountable as well. You know, but it's ultimately going to the nation of Israel. We all sinned. Right? It comes short of the glory of the Most High, being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Hamashiach Yahweh whom the Heavenly Father has set forth to be a propitiation. Atonement through faith in his blood, him laying his life on the line for us to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that we are passed through the forbearance of the Most High. You see that? So it's all through Yahweh Shamashiach being brought back to the Heavenly Father. It says, uh, to declare, I say at this time, his righteousness that he might be just 
and the justifier of him which believeth in Yahweh Shai. You know, it says, where is boasting in? It is excluded. By what law of, or of by what law of works? Nay, but by the law of faith. So that's what we're in. We're, we're, we're serving the law of faith, man. We keep the law to the best of our ability, but it's all, it's all through faith, man. Faith in Yahweh Shai and Adorama Tazah, we're covered in his blood. So reading on down, verse 28. Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. So it's all through faith in Yahweh Shai Mashiach. We're going to make it a body in, man. So for you jakes out there that's not covered in the blood of the lamb, you know what I'm saying? Basically, like, oh, going back to when the Lord Yahweh Shai was getting crucified, before he got crucified, what did they say? You know, they said, crucify him, crucify him. Let his blood be upon them and their children. So they came back as their children. And guess what? They're going to pay for their own sins. They're not covered in the blood of Yahweh Shai. So the sins that Yahweh Shai came to redeem, you know, are the Israelites, but only the elect, only the remnant, man. And I don't want to say we're part of that number. So you brothers out there that's in his truth, you sisters in his truth that believe in Yahweh Shai, um, when you fall short, don't let that weigh you down. Look at that scripture. You know, don't let that weigh you down because we have a, um, a mediator. We have an advocate, you know, which I may go back to First John, <clears throat> what I was reading earlier. I may go back to that, right? But we have an advocate, which is Yahweh Shai Mashiach, our Lord and our Savior. We will get the book of um, Second Edges, chapter 16. <clears throat> and we'll get straight to the point. This is verse, uh, let's say verse 70, 74. Matter of fact, 73. Then shall it be known who are my chosen. His chosen people owes me going to the elect, right? And they shall be tried as a golden of fire. See, the eleven get tried as that golden of fire. The scriptures say what? Except the men in the furnace of adversity. We got to go through trials, tribulations, and we'll come at as what? Pure gold. Right? So, let's, let's, let's read on down. Verse 74. Here ye my beloved, saith the Lord. Behold, the days of trouble are at hand, but I will deliver you from the same. Be not afraid, neither doubt, for the most high is your guide, and the guide of them who keep my commandments and precepts, saith the Lord power. Let not your sins weigh you down. And let not your iniquity lift up themselves. Right? Iniquity is what sin upon sin. Right? So the Lord said, don't let your sins weigh you down. But don't let your iniquity, your, your, it's like your iniquities lift up themselves. It's a balance. You're going to fall short. Don't let that weigh you down. But don't think because you fell short and nothing happened, you can keep falling short. Because because, because guess what? Um, um, Ecclesiastes 5 and 5. I'll read this right quick. It says, no, let's get verse 4. It says, say not I have sinned. And what harm have happened to me? So don't say that. Don't be like, okay, I sinned and nothing happened to me. Why? For the Lord is long suffering. He will in no wise let thee go. Concerning appropriation, be not with, be not without fear to add sin unto sin. So you must be afraid to, you know, let your iniquities lift up themselves, man. It says, and say not his mercy is great. He will be pacified for the multitude of my sins. For mercy and wrath come from him, and his, and his indignation rests upon sinners. So mercy and wrath. Come from Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. So we, we, you want to be found one in his mercies. And the only way you can be found in his mercies is what? You're covered in the blood of his son Yahweh Shai. You know? So ultimately, the importance of his son Yahweh Shai is far beyond, man, that people could, you know, people really, you know, understand. You know, at least Jake's out here think it's all about the law. It's all about Yahweh Shai, man. Because without Yahweh Shai, we ain't making it. Simple like that. And no matter how much, you know, fringe you got on your, your, your shirts. You know, it don't matter how much um, high holidays you don't kept, you know, it don't matter how, how many Sabbath days you didn't cook on, you know, if you don't believe in your house shot, you're not making it, man. You see, so let's go back. I believe I was, what I read earlier. Uh, let me see what. Wait, that's it on that. We have a couple more. Right. I, oh, I started with first John, the second chapter, which I read that again. I, I believe it's more on that. Right. So first John two and one. First John chapter two verse one, my little children, these things write out unto you, that ye sin not. And if any man sin, if you fall short, we have an advocate with the Father. So who's our advocate? Read it on down. Yahweh Shah Mashiach, the righteous, and he is the prop propitiation, the atonement for our sins, and not only and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Who's that whole world talking about? Let's get uh, Isaiah forty five and seventeen, the classic precept. You know, that's what scripture say, what? For precept must be upon precept, line upon line, here a little, and there a little. Isaiah 45 and 17, and it reads, But Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. That's only through Yahweh Shai. 
you gain everlasting life, everlasting salvation, everlasting mercy, everlasting joy, peace, rest, you know, everlasting rulership and power. It's all through Yahweh Shai because it was given him dominion in Daniel the seventh chapter. You see, and Daniel the second chapter, right? So it says, ye shall, let me read it from the top, Isaiah 45 and 17, but Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. You shall not be ashamed nor confounded world without end. So Israel is a world in itself. So you go to the word world in John, um, 1 John 2 and 2, that word there in the Greek is cosmos. You know, and that's also going to who? The nation of Israel, not the entire inhabited earth. Not every single person on the earth. You see? So it says, uh, let's read on down. Back to 1 John 2 and 2. I'm reading verse 3 now. And hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. He, he that say, if I know him and keep not his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoso keepeth his word in him, verily is the love of the most high perfected. Hereby know we that we are in him. You know, so we got to keep the commandments to the best of our ability. If you say you love the most high, you love Yahweh Shai, you're not keeping the commandments, you're not trying your best, you're a liar. It's that simple. You see that? <clears throat> So let's go back. Let's see what I want to um, get a couple more. Oh, yeah, this one I want to get to. 1 John chapter 4, verse 10. Let's start verse 7. It says, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is, is of the Most High. And everyone that loveth is born of the Most High and knoweth the Most High. He that loveth not knoweth not the Most High, for the Heavenly Father is love. And this was manifested the love of the Heavenly Father toward us, because that the Most High sent his only begotten Son, into into the world that we might live through him. See, through Yahweh Shai we live. You see that? Here in love, not that we love the most high, but that he loved us and he and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Man, that's the point of the lesson. The atonement for the sins of the nation Israel starting with the elect. It says, Beloved, if the most high so loved us, we ought also to love one another. You know? It says, um, no man have seen the most high any time. If we love one another, the Most High dwelleth in us, and his love is perfected in us. Hereby know we that we dwell in him, and he in us, because he hath given us his spirit, the Rechai Kodash. You know? So it's a beautiful thing, man. You know, being in his, in his faith and his truth. I'm, I'm going to end it over with a couple more. Let's read this very quick. Uh, Hebrews 9 and 14. How much more shall the blood of Hamashiach, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to the Most High, Purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. You see that? Through his blood, man. The blood of Hamashiach. You know what I'm saying? He offered himself up without spot, without without blemish. She was that lamb. You know? Should I start up some in this one? Let me see. This whole chapter I already know is beautiful, man. Let's read on down verse 15. It says, And for this cause he that is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of death for the redemption of the transgressions. That were under the first testament. Who's under the first testament? Who's under the first um, covenant? The nation of Israel, man. So who's the new one for? The nation of Israel. Let's read that from the top. Right? It's the book of Hebrews 9 and verse 15. And for this cause, he is the mediator of the new testament that by means of death for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal, eternal inheritance. For where a testament is... There must also of necessity be the death of the tester, the testator, for a testament is of is of force after men are dead, otherwise it is of no strength at all by the tester liveth. Right? Let's see if there's more on that. It says verse 18, whereupon neither the first testament was dedicated without blood. You go to you know during the time of Moses, right? Uh, this whole chapter is good. But that was, that was the main point to get. Matter of fact, no, let's read on let's read on down, man. Let's read on down. Right? So verse 19. For when Moses had spoken every precept to all the people according to the law, the Israelites, he took the blood of calves and of goats with water and scarlet wool and hyssop and sprinkled both the book and all the people. And all the you know, all the people slack it, saying, This is the blood of the testament which the most have enjoined with unto you. Moreover, he sprinkled with blood both the tabernacle and all the vessels of the ministry. And almost all things are by the law purged with blood, and without shedding of blood is no remission. So that's how the most ideals, man. You know, like we had often burnt offerings and you know sacrifices, sin offerings to the Lord. It had to be a turtle dove, it could be a, a lamb, goat. You know what I'm saying? You offer up to Yahweh Shai. You see, 
the Lord, that's what the Lord was doing. He wasn't dealing with Cain's offering, man. Because Cain knew he was going off, man. He wanted to give him fruits and, and flowers and shit, man. The Lord, what the fuck is this? Abel gave a right offering to the Lord. You know, I believe he gave him the first things of his flock. But that's, that's the Apostle Paul is going into, which is, this is, um, I believe Timothy wrote this for the Apostle Paul while he was in Italy, right? So I'm, I'm reading on down. It says, it was therefore necessary that the patterns of things in the heavens should be per per purified with these, but the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than these. For Hamashiach Yahushai is not entered into the holy places made with hands, which are the figures of the, tr of the true, but into the heaven, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of the Mosaf for us. Nor yet that he should offer himself often as a high priest entereth into the holy place every year with, with blood of others. For then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world. But now once in the end of the world, have he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself, man. You know, so the end of the world started 2,000 years ago when the Lord Yahweh Shah came on the scene. Verse 27. And as, it was, and as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment, so Hamashiach Yahweh Shai was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall appear the second time without sin unto salvation. So we're going to make it back to the Father, make it to the kingdom, all through our Lord Yahweh Shai, man. So out of his eye, he was edified. I want to give called Lime Lai Yahweh Ba'ashem Yahweh Shai Ba'ashem Kodash. Double honor said elders and apostles of Great Millstone. Peace and salutations to the elect scattered abroad, pushing his truth and sincerity. Right, there's a lot of more scripts I could have got going to this topic, but I want to make it quick, straight to the point. Right about the plantation, you know, trying to do a lesson discreetly, you know. So I don't know how to use edify. Right, uh, with that I'm gonna say shalom, while Baba Ball shalom.